Um, I'm about to start streaming something. Let me show you what it is. No, this is not it. This is just a fake um, boot up screen to load up a game in Windows 90. Well, wait, fake Windows 95. Um, this is. Oh, I have to watch the intro again because I played this already. Okay, let's watch rewatch the intro then. Welcome to John Saul's The Blackstone Chronicles, 1998, Mindscape Incorporated. All right, you're Five years have passed since the dark figure moved among the citizens of Blackstone, distributing the gifts that brought madness and death. Each month had brought a new gift and a new tragedy. A doll, a woman's locket, then a cigarette lighter. A handkerchief and an old-fashioned stereoscope. The public never learned the identity of the dark figure, but somehow everyone knew the old asylum was at the center of the tragedies. People got on with their lives. Oliver Metcalf, son of the last asylum keeper, married Rebecca Morrison. A year later, they had a son, who has since remained blissfully ignorant of the evil that has plagued his family. Now, the State Historical Society has renovated the asylum and plans to open it as a museum of psychiatric history. Malcolm Metcalf, the last superintendent of the asylum, was my father. The last time the old building was disturbed, my memories of him came alive and I became the dark figure. This time, I pray to God he will leave me and my family in peace. Welcome back, Oliver. It's been almost five years. Hello, father. What do you want? Look around, Oliver. Do you know where you are? It's the old asylum, but it doesn't look like this anymore. It's all been changed. You disobeyed me, Oliver. You never finished the task I set out for you. I did more than I should have. Nonsense. Your task was simple. You were to seek revenge on the families. You've killed enough people, Father. Can't you leave me alone? No. First, they took the asylum from me. Now they plan to turn it into a museum. They must be punished, Oliver. Starting with that woman you married. You should know better than that. I won't do it. The son disobeys the father, eh? Perhaps I'll have better luck with your son. Joshua. Who are you? Grandfather Malcolm. I thought you were dead. Oh, 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 oh no. Come along with me, Joshua. I know some good games we can play. Okay. You see, Oliver, I mean to have my revenge. Perhaps you will see things my way before the night is through. I'm sure young Joshua will. Mm. So anyway, this is... We play Oliver Metcalf, the son of this really creepy dude here who you can talk to by this painting. Welcome back, Oliver. Ah, okay. We can ask him questions. Where have you taken him, him father? He's in the, in the secret room. You know where that at is, don't you? Uh. I haven't been in here for five years. You remember, Oliver. You just don't want to admit it. Okay. I don't remember. Part of you remembers. You must let that part come back. Okay. You will gain control of me again. I never controlled you. 
You became the dark figure because you wanted to. You gave out the gifts because it was the right thing to do. I think you're lying, but... Um... I will never go back. If you wish to rescue young Joshua, you must. Mm. It's just a hallucination. An interesting hypothesis. Incorrect, but interesting. I assure you, I am quite real. And this is not a nightmare from which you will somehow awaken. Okay. Why can't you leave us alone? I cannot do that, Oliver. A parent's responsibility to his child never ends, even in death. What are you talking about? What are you about? talking about? You have not been a good boy, Oliver. Not only have you chosen to abandon my life's work, you have also refused to seek revenge upon those who cut it short. What are you talking about? What does he have to do with it? Someone must shoulder the family burden. If you refuse the task, then I must train young Joshua, just as I once trained you. Mm. You tortured me. Rubbish. I used pain as an appropriate motivational device, just as every parent does. No. Except I was far more rational than most. I never hurt you in anger, Oliver. Not every father can say that. Yeah, well, you seem like a creepy Bring asshole. Bring him back. No. You must come and get him. I believe spending time in this building will remind you of how important our work is. And that it will help persuade you it must be finished. I want you to rediscover the part of you that is buried, Oliver. However, you have only until dawn. If you have not entered the secret room by daybreak, I will give up on you for good and begin to teach Joshua what it means to be born a Metcalf. Uh, goodbye. Uh, anyway, let's look at our other things. They're too soft. Promotes poor posture. <laughs> What's this? They did a nice job with that. Okay. I said no. Do you really think you should be resting, Oliver? I guess not, no. Alright, let's look at this. Your grandfather was quite the hunter. I never cared for blood sports myself. Right. Now you just cared about being a abusive asshole. I've never understood how people can, can be so cruel to animals. Really? But yet you have no problem with... They did with... a nice job with that. Okay, I mean, I agree with you about the animals thing, but, uh... You're kind of a sicko, though, still. The important thing was that they be too, too heavy for the inmates to lift. Fewer injuries that way. I liked these couches because they were com comfortable, yet didn't allow the patients to slouch. Okay. You're a really creepy asshole, just saying. Now I'm wondering outside, because that will probably, like, forfeit the game. They did a nice job with that. Okay. Alright, well, we can, uh, look at some other things here. What's this? It, it broke my heart how they let this place go to ruin. Okay. Is this one? It'll never be the way it was, Oliver. They destroyed it. Yeah, okay. Nothing in there. Okay. What's these buttons do? This is the way the entry hall hall looked before the Blackstone Historical Society purchased the asylum and began our restoration program. Mm -hmm. The restoration of the entry hall is now complete. Although other areas of the building still still remain to be restored. This game works for the most part, but there's a few little echoes uh, during audio. This wasn't originally doing this, but I'm guessing this has something to do with the way that the emulator uh, is handling the game. 
hopefully eventually this game will be released on GOG or Steam. Then I can play it again. But I'm gonna play it on here for now. Let's see. The Blackstone Asylum, Blackstone Historical Society. The Blackstone Hospital for the Mentally Ill was originally the patriarchal home of Tycoon Charles Connolly. Constructed on the same massive scale as the American castles of Vanderbilt and Rockefeller, the mansion was converted to an asylum in 1925, three years before Connolly's death. For the next 34 years, the property was converted as a hospital for the insane, and its peak more than 500 inmates and staff lived on the grounds. After the hospital's board of trustees voted to close it in 1959, the building stood empty for nearly four years until it was purchased by the Blackstone Historical Society for use as a museum of psychiatric history. The mansion universe. Charles Connolly invited craftsmen from all over the world to build his version in this castle, which took more than ten years to create. Perched on North Hill with a commanding view of the town of Blackstone, the main building was completed in 1908 and had more than 100 bedrooms, 60 bathrooms, and 45 fireplaces. Prior to World War I, the mansion was the weekend playground of the elite of Boston society. In the 1920s, however, as families fell to be under fall, fail, the grounds and outbuildings fell into disrepair. An avid outdoorsman, Conway situated his home on 1520 acres of rolling hillside forests and farmland, where he and his guests went horseback riding and hunting trophies from cars of the big game safari still hang in the entry hall. Previous asylum years. The mansion and grounds were ideally suited for an asylum, especially in the moral management era of psychiatric care, during which patients were encouraged to participate in a wide variety of activities ranging from craftwork to farming and light manufacturing. Through the years, the original mansion underwent many modifications. Wings were added to hold patient wards, although private patients from wealthier families were still quartered in the spacious bedrooms on the second floor of the main building. Many of the staff lived on the grounds as well. The superintendent's cottage, the building just to the south of the main entrance, is still occupied today by the son of the last superintendent. Alright, go back to previous so we can read the rest of this show. The abandoned years. The building stood empty from 1959 to 1998. For most of that time, it was boarded up in insignificant need of repair. A portion of the roof collapsed and the interior was heavily vandalized. In the early 1990s, a consortium of investors brought the man bought the mansion with the intention of demolishing it and building a shopping center. The incident hardly began, however, when it was associated with the project being suffering a series of accidents. In addition to the project went, the building's fate was not determined until the mansion was declared a national historic landmark and was fetched by the Blackstone Historic Society for its previous present use as a museum. Yeah, somehow I think those accidents were probably um, Malcolm Metcalf's doing, and they weren't accidents, but, you know. Museum. The asylum years spanned the most exciting era in the history of psychiatric care, during which many amazing new techniques were developed about the age of the problem of mental illness. Through a faithful reconstruction of patient rooms, common areas and treatment rooms, our historians have captured the excitement of that time and hope it represents for the future. Patient rooms are furnished with the actual belongings of the inmates who look through trick rooms with original equipment in working order. Throughout every effort has been made to authentically represent the daily workings of the Blackstone Asylum. Alright, we're done in here. So let us continue looking around. Um what that door. I don't think we can go in there yet. We can go up though, or forward. And we'll just turn around and look at everything. What's these boxes? Apparently they're not quite ready for opening day. Hmm. Lights. I added those myself. The hall is too gloomy without them. Right. You're a gloomy person, to be honest. Can I look at this? Your grandfather was quite... Yeah, I looked at They did a nice job. Okay, can I go in here? Okay, I can go in here. Alright, let's go in here and look around. If you've seen the movie, uh... One Flew Over Cuckoo's Nest, uh... This is a very good representation of that type of, uh, environment. Nasty looking weapon, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Can I take it? Okay, I guess you can take things. All right, cool. Uh, can I look at this? A thin punch like that was perfect for making holes in leather. 
Can I take it too? Yes! Alright, cool. So there is certain items you can grab in this. Not everything. Oh, let's read what this says to say. The day room. While many institutions lapsed into custodial care, Blackstone prided itself in following the principles of moral management established in the 1800s. Occupational therapy, recreation, religious events, and other activities that England left on the outside were designed to gradually enable the patient to return to normal society. Nowhere are the results of these ideas more evident than here in the day room, which became the focus of many patients' lives. Here they played games and worked on their crafts. Some of the craft servants became so skillful that in time, they became known as quality producers of goods. The Lord of Wickham Group became particularly famous, and a Blackstone belt is still a prized possession. Okay. Occupational therapy. Occupational therapy was typically assigned along gender lines. The men worked in the fields and the gardens. They did light manufacturing work and helped with the maintenance of the buildings and the hospital's mechanical equipment. Women typically worked as housekeepers, seamstresses, or in the kitchens. The kitchen that joins this room is not part of the museum exhibit area, as it is an active use for events held in the museum after hours. It is hoped that one of the other larger kitchens will be opened in phase two of the museum's renovation, along with several of the patient wards. And wow, that music is really annoying. The daily schedule. Establishing a regular daily routine was regarded as key to patients' recoveries because it created the framework in which they could begin to see themselves once again as normal people leading normal lives. Everyone arose at six o'clock, then maids were required to make their own beds prior to breakfast. After breakfast, the doctors made their rounds, prescribing medicine, early treatments, and activities. The remainder of the morning was given to occupational therapy. The period after lunch was devoted to exercise, games, and other amusements. On most days, the evening meal was also followed by an organized attachment, which usually took place in the day room. Alright, good. We're done reading this. So I can look around and have him talk without me talking. The important thing was that they be too, too heavy for the inmates to li lift. Fewer injuries that way. Right. Mm -hmm. I liked these couch. Okay, I'll do the same thing as before. Let's look around. The house looks okay. What's this? We encourage the violent inmates to take up painting. No art ever, ever came of it. Yeah. But it seemed to help calm them down. Okay. Restful art is part of the therapeutic processes. Right. Restful. Okay, I already read that. I need, I need to read the caps again. The inmate may used to sit for hours at a time, ju just staring. Yeah, they were staring because they went out of here. And I can't... S I can only imagine, you know, how horrible it must have been in this place. Uh, let's, uh, hmm. Let's keep going this way, I guess. Let's go forward. And look at some more stuff. Hmm. Now we can go in here, I guess. That goes to the kitchen. Which I will go in a minute. In a minute. Some inmates it became quite skilled in metalwork, leather crafts, and wood carving. Right. You may think these crafts trite, but but were very important to the patients. Mm-hmm. Okay, already looked at that. Already looked at the workbench. Basket. Basket weaving was quite popular, especially with the psychosurgery patients. Okay. Pot. Do you remember the pottery? You used to love to watch the wheels going round and round. Okay. You are a creepy person. I find Malcolm Metcalf to be a very creepy individual. It's bolt bolted down. Less dangerous that way. Hmm. How do I get in here? Oh, what's this? Actually, we did have to lock away some of the more destructive implements. A, a simple precaution. Aha. Uh -huh. I often worried about those exposed hinges, but none of the inmates ever thought of removing them. Aha. Uh -huh. 
They seem to have changed the lock. Hmm. Do we have any items that we can maybe do something with? Can I use this to remove the hinges? Nah. What about this? That worked! What's that? Looks like they cleaned it out. Hmm. Not much good without a blade. Right, but we can retake at least. Hmm, can I put... Uh, can I use this with the... Maybe this one? Yes, no. Okay, so we can't combine it with that. But we gotta find something to uh, attach to the hacksaw. So we can give it a blade. Look around. Maybe we'll find something. Doesn't feel feel cold at all. Hmm. Well, it looks like we need to open it. Doesn't budge. Okay, we gotta fix this. The kitchen has its own set of circuits. Hmm. Open that. Let's see what it says. Oh, we're missing a fuse. Hmm. Must need need a new fuse. Yeah, we gotta find a fuse for that. I forget where we find the fuse. Like I said, it's been years since I played this game. Hopefully I can remember what where everything is. <laughs> Sus. It hasn't been recharged in years. The fire department will crucify them at final inspection. <laughs> it's worthless, Oliver. It's deader than I am. <laughs> Our menus were meticulously planned by trained dietitians. I suspect the patients didn't appreciate the effort we put into keeping them on a healthy diet. Yeah. Uh, okay, there's nothing else to do there. But I gotta figure out how to open this freezer, because I'm thinking there's something in there that I need. Wish I could remember what. These ovens could turn out over a thousand meals a day. Okay. Cuts down on injuries. Keeps people from slipping. Hmm. I'm surprised you actually cared about that. Can. Only women did the cooking. The men then used the pans as weapons. Mm hmm. Only women did. That sounds sexist as hell to me. But whatever. Ah. You'd be, be surprised at the ed edge you can put on a knife with hmm. one of these. Hmm. Uh -huh. Can I? Not that. Do this. It's old, but it looks serviceable. Yeah, if we can like make it. Uh, we oh oh I know. Let me sharpen it with this. There we go. Sharper now. Nice. Can we use that with the hacksaw? No, I guess not. I thought really put the blade on the hacksaw. I see what's in this cabinet. Or unless it's locked. It's locked. We kept ordinary supplies in there. I don't know what the new new people plan to to do. Hmm. Well. Can we use this stuff in it? Yes, we can. Perfect. All right, what's in here? Oh, a wrench. I wonder why they call them monkey wrenches. Hmm, I don't know. Let's take one. Cool. All right, so we needed the wrench in here, I guess. For what? I have no... I can't remember. Is there anything in this side? No, just the one side. Okay. But, uh... Where was it? I, th I thought I taught you be better than to waste water. <laughs> we ran off our, our own wells. 
purest water you could ever imagine. Did you know lobsters used to be so plentiful and cheap that railroad workers could eat them three meals a day? They got so sick of them they went on on strike for the right not, not to be fed lobsters. That's weird. Who would be who would want to go on strike for the right not to eat lobster? Lobster's good. Alright, um an essential tool for handling boiling lobsters. Hmm, but we can probably use it for other things too. Doink. Alright, what's this? Only women. Yeah, I already read that. I already heard your sexist remark about that. Do I need this? Soup was always a questionable meal. It had a good chance of ending up on the walls. Hmm. Oh, leave it be, Oliver. Stop fidgeting about. Okay, I guess we don't need that. Did you know love? Yeah, you already told me that. Okay. Alright, we've got... A... Tongs. What do I need to use the tongs for? I forget. Like I said, it's been years since I played this game. Only women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's this? O only What? I can't look at the... I guess I can't look at that. Alright. Oh, but these are important. We use these for making shish kebabs. Hmm. We can take these. And I think we can attach them to the hacksaw blade, can't we? I guess not. I don't know if we could. Why do I think I could use those to do the hacksaw blade? I guess not. Hmm, what can we use these shishkamas doors for? Hmm. I'm just trying to use them on things just to see if something happens. Don't look like anything happened now. Sink. This was just for spot cleaning. The automatic dishwashers are around behind the freezer. Hmm. Okay, I looked at that. Hmm. Hmm. Table. The inmates did a surprising amount of the cooking. Therapeutic and cost effective at the same time. Hmm. <laughs> All about saving money, huh? Okay, can I go any further that way, or do I have to go around? I guess not. I guess that's only for decoration, then. So we can't go forward to see what all this stuff is. Stuff, I guess, is not important, then. Alright. So I guess we're done in here, then. For now, we gotta figure out how to... Uh... Replace that fuse. And we gotta figure out... What to put in that, uh... Where this hacksaw blade's missing a blade. And... But I think we're done in this room for now. So we'll come back here later. I don't know how much of this I'm going to play tonight. I just want to, like, play for a little bit. Uh, looked at everything in here. I already opened uh, this cabinet here, so we don't need to go in there. Unless there's something else. I think we're done in this room for now. Okay, let's get out of here then. What's this room? It's locked. Hmm. We gotta figure out how to get in there. Moose were so plentiful, I hardly see why sh shooting one was regarded as an accomplishment. Hmm. Yes. That's all we got here. Mm hmm. This door. Where does this go? This is the same room we were in? This is the same room we were just in. Okay. Never mind. No room, I guess. I wish I could just, like, turn directly around, but I guess I won't let you do that. Alright, so anyway, we'll just leave this room behind, because we. Just went back in the room we've already been in. Okay! So I have no desire to go back in there. Because that music is annoying. Okay. I think we can go upstairs now. Uh, oh, no, we can't. I uh, thought we could go this way. Hmm. Let's 
just go up. Does this asshole have anything else to say? I'm gonna look at his picture real quick and see if he has anything else to say. Not that I really want to talk to this creepy buck, but uh, let's see what he has to say. Yes, Oliver. Yeah, no, nah, I don't have anything to say to you. Alright. What is up here? Hmm. Ah, yes, we've got to find the lever so we can open this. Uh, elevator handle was stored in the office each evening at 6 o'clock. Okay, so we've got to go to the office and open to get the handle. Alright then, let's do that. I think that's here, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, this is the office. Right, cool. This guy, I think, doesn't have anything in here. I'm sure he does. Alright, let's look at uh, this. The families of prospective patients were always impressed by the grounds, by the building, and by the staff. But sometimes what impressed them most of all was that old-fashioned elevator and the uniformed operator. Alright, let's press this. The elevator in the entry hall was used only by the superintendent and his special visitors. To ensure there was no unauthorized use, he had the operator's handle locked up in his office each night. Hmm. Well, we can take that, because we need that. Let's take the handle. All right, let's take the keys too. It'll do you no good, Oliver. Only I remember which key goes in which lock. You'll spend all night trying to get through one door. Oh, I'll find someone that'll tell me the answers. I'm gonna take the keys anyway. Cause seriously, fuck you. Anyway. Close the case. Let's push that button too, so we can hear what it says. In any psychiatric hospital, controlling access is of paramount importance. Each worker had only those keys that allowed him to do his job. Only the superintendent had the master set of keys to every lock in the building. Which is what we have. Okay, let's, uh, let's see what this has to say. More reading. Superintendent's office. The office of the superintendent functions as both the research and the administrative center of the hospital. This room has been restored to the belongings of the last superintendent of the hospital, Dr. Malcolm Metcalf, a world-renowned therapist and research scientist. Dr. Metcalf's progressive techniques are responsible for cure rates that far exceeded the national average, even though he was a creepy bastard. Although his private research notes have been lost, this assignment of official patient records have been recovered and thrown into the society by Oliver Metcalf, Dr. Metcalf's son. These records have been computerized and are available to serious researchers upon request of the museum curator. Malcolm Metcalf. Born in 1914, Dr. Metcalf was a prodigy who was graduated from the Sorbonne at the age of 18 and from Harvard Medical School when he was just 23. His first paper, The Physiology of Psychosis, was published in 1938. It was among the first to insist that all mental illness has a physical cause, and he coined the middle phrase to cure the mind but first the body. His subsequent groundbreaking study of the nervous system earned him the 1942 Old Cabot Award and a nomination for the Nobel Prize for Medicine. An accomplished amateur musician, he dedicated his concerto for two clarinets to the of his musical idol, Johann Sebastian Bach. In 1949, he married to Conway, daughter of the asylum's founder. Their marriage came to a tragic end in 1952, which he died giving birth to his twin son and daughter. Then, four years later, his daughter was killed in a terrible accident, from which he said her father never recovered. Dr. Metcalf died in 1959. Wow, I feel a little bit sorry for this guy. Uh, a little bit, because he's still a creepy bastard. But, uh, that's, that's sad to lose your, um, you know, your wife and your, um, uh, uh, daughter. But, uh, yeah. He's still a bastard, though. To be honest. Super intense role. The royal superintendent was that of the stern, authoritarian, yet loving and concerned father. His duties were largely administered, but although Dr. Metcalf maintained a small private practice and never completely abandoned his research. The organizational tasks of running the hospital were staggering. 
Dr. Metcalf and his staff have devised treatment plans, diets, and customized activity programs for the inmates. In addition, he personally supervised the building, expansion, and was an active fundraiser. Dr. Metcalf's reputation alone was sufficient to ensure a steady stream of well-to-do patients. In these years, when mental illness still wore a significant social stigma, wealthy families were more than willing to pay for the privacy and discretion for which Dr. Metcalf was known. Uh-huh. So he was actually, not only was he a creepy bastard, but he was also a corrupt one. But I kinda knew that. Scholarly research. Qualified research has been applied to Michael Sack, the cure of the museum, to gain access to asylum patient records. Those who do so must sign an agreement stating they will respect the privacy of the inmates and that under no circumstances with the name of any patient be published. Upon approval of the patient, a patch will be issued and computer time will be signed. The museum gratefully acknowledges the families of inmates whose rooms are on display, both for the identification of their personal effects and for granting permission to reveal their identities. Okay, cool, we don't have to read anymore. Thank God, too, because that's a lot of shit to read. Alright, next! Anyway, we got the handle to open to go through the elevator now, and we've also got some keys. But since I don't know what any of the keys do, I can't really do anything with them yet. So, we got to find out. Hmm, let's look around, though. There's more to be found. Let's see what all this has to say about it. Your mother died too soon, Oliver, Oliver, but I no longer blame you and Mallory for her death. Wow. So you blamed us for her death? Gee, talk about a fucked up person, dude. She's not here, Oliver. She rarely came into this asylum and never formed a strong, strong enough connection with anything to keep her spirit here. Ah, okay, so that's why I can talk to you. Got it. What's this photo I have to say? Ah, oh, it's a picture of me, as a kid. That was taken on your third birthday. It's you and your sister Mallory. The day you were born was the most important day of my life. Hmm, the important day of your life, huh? So, I was born on what day? Oliver Metcalf was born on... 4-24... 55? No, okay, yeah. Good night. Password... Scooter. Hmm. I sure, sure hope they remove this before they open next week. Yeah, that would be... embarrassing. Operate computer. Okay. Please have the best of my time. Oh. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, you belong there, though. Mm. Oh. What the hell? I was actually in the asylum database? That is... that is crazy. Well, why do I need to, um... Why do I need to remember my... birthday? Though that's curious. Because I haven't really seen anything that I... I would need that for yet. Maybe there's like a three-digit code or something that I'm gonna need to know about. Webster's second unabridged. Before they, they started corrupting the language. Hmm. The vases belong to your mother. Okay. What's this have to say? You should have known better than to hang that in here. I detested killing animals. But you had no problem killing humans, though. Right, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Ah. Let's say. Can I take this? This is hardly the time for a pot of coffee. Hmm. I'm gonna take that. I have a feeling I need it for some reason. I forget why. That that is Donatien Alphonse, my college which we made. What good, good are coffee cups without a pot to go with with them? Hmm. 
The vases belong to your mother. Yes. I do feel sorry for him losing his wife, but at the same time, uh, he's kind of a dick. You remember this desk, Oliver? You used to play underneath it fit for hours. Okay. At one point you were a nice person, I guess. Oh, what's this? It was a gift to me from a Russian physician. It rather looks like me, me don't you think? Yeah, we should probably take that for some reason. I forget why. Come take it. That was always one of your favorites. I used to crack nuts with it when you came to play. Okay. That is the score to my concerto for two cl clarinets. It was performed at Carnegie Hall by Jamie Scott and Victor Navorn. You are quite arrogant. Those are the anatomical drawings that accompanied the first article I ever had published. Who's this picture of? Louisa Hartwig. She was the leader of the women's volunteers here at the hospital. Okay. And get next. Those are gifts from colleagues all over the world. You miss miss out on a wonderful profession, Oliver. Nah. Those came from the fireplace in the Great Hall at Barclay Castle in England. Okay. The vases. Yeah, you wrote on me that. Hmm. Oh, hmm. Can I do anything else? Now? I forget why I need to get in that. Vesalius, de humani corporis fabrica. On the uses of the parts of the body of man. By Galen of Pergamum. Fractures, dislocations, and wounds. By Hippocrates. Mm -hmm. Ahawi. By Orozi. Vesalius. On Aphasia. By Freud. Mm -hmm. William Harvey's essay on the motion of the heart and the blood. Carolus Linnaeus, Systema Naturae. I'm sure there's a reason. Carolus von Darsny, by Paracelsus. Why is it I have a feeling that we need to push these books in a certain order and a secret passage will open up? I don't know why I feel that. You never did enough reading as a child, Oliver. Mm. Not of the right sort, anyway. Mm. The Physiology of Psychosis, by Metcalf. Uh huh. Avicenna's Canon of Medicine. My own small contribution to the body of medical knowledge. Mm -hmm. You never did enough reading. Yes, yes, yes. I gotta say something. Okay. Well, we're done there. Um, what else can we look at in here? Um, I still don't know why we need to uh, know that. Birthday, but I'm sure there's a reason. I bought it in Persia while I was attending a medical conference. Okay. Hmm. Let's go for what I guess. Well, at least we now have a way of going upstairs to the uh, thing. But we can't do anything else. I want to know why I need to know. Um. Uh, my. Uh. The, the year that my character was born, though. I'm sure I'll figure that out later on. But uh, let us go upstairs now. See, this isn't blind because I haven't played this game, but it's been years. So, we will see if I don't much I can remember. I do remember, however, that we need to put this 
on the um, the handle on the uh, thing. I thought we did it like that. I guess not. Oh, attach handle controls. There. There we go. Now I don't have to worry about that. Okay, cool. And we're on the first floor already. Can we go to the basement? Or do we need to go to the second floor first? Okay, we can push it to 2 or B. Let's go to the B first. Check the basement out. We probably can't go much very far though, because we're probably like... Uh, the doors are locked. We need the keys to go in, so... We'll go out here and see what happens. Creepy. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. I'm sure all these doors are locked and we can't go in them yet. But I'm gonna find out just to make sure. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. This door locked too? It's locked. Yeah, it's locked. Okay, so we gotta find a key. I mean, well, we got all the keys. Some stains stay stainless always, no matter how we may try to scrub them out. Mm hmm. I looked at that. Uh -huh. Better leave them alone. You always were afraid of the dark. No, nah, no, nah, I'm just afraid of the company in the dark. Which is you. Okay, we've already been there. Uh, let us see what to... Uh, can I... Can I do anything else there? No. I think we're done. They seem really solid. Uh -huh. Every room would you waste, your son comes closer to being mine. Yeah, well, I'm just looking around, that's all. And really, there's no time limit in this game. Uh, during the regular part of the game. Now, you do get... There is a time limit eventually, but you really don't uh, deal with it until you're in a time puzzle type thing. And in those, you can actually die. But I will show you those. I mean, I'll tell you about those when we get to them. Um, we haven't even gotten close to one of them yet, I think. Anyway, we can get out of here now and uh, inspect the second floor. It's locked. That room's locked. Are there any doors we can enter yet? Is this door unlocked by any chance? I hope it is, because if not, we can't open anything. Okay, cool, this is open. Good. I was scared there, because I was like, man, we can't go anywhere, because the doors are all locked. There's a door. Alright, goes back. Okay, we don't need to do anything there. Let's go uh, forward, I guess. Huh. There's a room open there we can go in. Is this door locked? It's locked. Of course it is. Uh, let us see what... This door lock? No, uh, it's not there. Okay, yeah, we need to go in here to... In this room to talk to somebody. But, uh... Yeah, let's go in there, I guess. Because it's the first place to go. There's our kid. It's dark in here, Dad. It'll be okay, Josh. You've got Freddy with you, right? Yeah. Okay, well hang on to him. He'll keep you company until I get there. Okay. Hello? Is someone there? Uh, hello? Who are you? I'm, I'm Marlon Wilson. This is my room. Or at least it is it is until I have my baby. I'm due any day now. Hmm, uh, congratulations. I'm very, very happy for you. Th thanks, talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Aha! Okay, let us, uh, let us save. 
because I I'm gonna save. Let's save here. I'm gonna call it wine. All right. Just because I want to save. I'll just look around. The big one was Tommy, and the little one's Teresa. I snuggle them every night. Mm. That's little Teresa. After she's born, she'll sleep in the bassinet. Okay. Mom and Dad let me bring it from home. I'm good. Hey, I'm in enough trouble, trouble already. <laughs> what are you look looking for? Ghosts? I don't know. Come on, leave that alone. I have to make that bed myself. Okay, sorry. Alright, I don't know what to do. Oh! This is how we can talk to her with this picture. What's in here? Ooh! Oh, we can read this. Hmm. Dear Diary, I have... Dear Diary! I have started writing to you as that, so that, as, that after Teresa's, oh, I have started writing to you that after Teresa's born, I will be able to remember all the interesting things that happened to me here. This is the strangest place I've ever been. I've heard about it all my life. Parents and blacks and Blackstone always threaten their children with being sent away to the asylum. Uh, asylum here on the hill. But now that I'm inside, it doesn't seem so bad. Maybe when I get out, I will write an article with the chronicle about it. I think it's strange that the nicest people here are the inmates. That surprised me. I expected the doctors and nurses to care more about the patients, but they are so busy, they hardly have any the time. The people who really run the asylum are the attendants. We only see a real doctor once each week. The attendants are the ones who make the rules, and everyone is very careful not to get them mad because you can end up in the. Uh. What's I say? I can't even read that. Something or solitary, or even worse. Today, Dr. Metcalf himself came to visit me. He is a very famous man who has gifts from other famous people all over the world, like the stuff on his mantelpiece and the nutcracker he keeps in his desk drawer. Dr. Metcalf told me that I was very sick. I told him I felt fine, but he just shook his head. He said tomorrow he was going to take me down to the furnace room in the basement, which is pretty strange because I've never heard of patient going in there for treatment. Oh well, we'll see what tomorrow brings. I'll be sure to fight you at the end of the diet. Hmm. The pages are stuck together. <laughs> we gotta do something about that. He told me I needed to learn the difference between fantasy and reality. And then he threw the book right into the furnace. I couldn't believe he would do something so mean. I got so mad, I started to cry. He seemed happy that I was crying. Wow, what a dick. He said it meant I was more connected to reality. I take back what I said before about this place being not so bad. I want to go home. Dear Diary, I told you yesterday how Dr. Metcalf took me down to the furnace room and the horrible thing he did there. Well, today he took me down there again. Oh, this time it was my baby blanket. I had saved it since I was a baby, and I was going to give it to Teresa. Okay. Now I don't know what to do. Tommy's in Korea, and my parents won't talk to me. The only, the only, visits, the only visitor I've had is Martha, and she had to sneak out of the house to see me. 
She thought she bought the nicest present. It's a cigarette lighter. Shaped like a dragon. I am very lonely. Dear diary, I've been talking with some of the other inmates, and things aren't as nice here as I thought they were at the beginning. I thought everyone had their own room, but that isn't so. Some words are as crowded. You could walk on the beds from one end of the other to the without even touching the floor. I also learned that Dr. Metcalf is mean to more people than just me. Yeah, he's a real dick, but we don't need that. Tell me hasn't written me a single letter. This is, dear daddy, this is the last day I'll be writing you. I've decided I don't really want to remember the things that are happening here. After Teresa's born, I will take her and leave this place and never think about it again. Yeah, but you must have attached yourself to this place because I can still talk to you here. I don't think anyone will ever understand how horrible this place is. Thank you for being, for reading, for being here. You've been a real comfort. Maybe one day I'll write to you again, but it won't be until I have left this place far behind. Yours truly, Marilyn Wilson. Hmm. Marilyn Wilson. I just want to look that up in the uh, the um. Uh, computer that I found. With all the money my parents are spending, you'd think they could spring for more than just what one lamp. Hmm. Hi. Thanks for coming to visit me. That's her. Have you seen my cig cigarette lighter? Uh, no. Why? Is yours missing? Yes. It was a present from my sister. You'd recognize it right away. It's shaped like a really, really neat dragon. Hmm. I I'd be really grateful if you could find it, find it for me. I'll try it. Tell me about the baby. She'll be born real soon. I, I say she, although I really, really don't know yet. But I'm, ho I'm hoping for a girl. Aren't you, you a little young to be having a baby? Yeah, I, I know. My par parents are furious. That's why they put me in here. But, but when Tommy gets back, we'll get married and then, and then everything will be okay. Who's time? Is he any older than you? Tommy Gard Gardner. He's my fiancé. He'll be 19 in November. Hmm. Why isn't he around to help? Hell? He's in Korea. That's his picture with his army buddies on the bulletin board. Hmm. Alright. Where do I where do I find that? Close this door now. Oh. Okay, now I can look. Alright. That's me with my two sisters, Martha and Margaret. With me named Marilyn, that makes three M's. We call ourselves the Three Musketeers. Marilyn Wilson. Why do they make you wear those things? They look so... goofy. It'll never fit. Not in a million years. Stealing from a pregnant wo woman? Some guy you are. Oh, I'm sorry. That's mom and dad. They're mad at me right now. But I think they'll change when they get to hold ho their new granddaughter. Hmm. That's Tommy with his army buddies in Korea. Isn't he cute? I can't really see from here. Graduating from high school was the happiest day of my life. Okay. They're a gag gift from my girlfriend. <laughs> no baby's feet could be that small. Besides, they're blue, and I'm, I'm going to have a girl. I thought you didn't know what you were doing. Do you like it? I picked it out myself. Hmm. Okay, man. Is there anything else to look at in there? Ah, here we go. What is... Ah! I don't have a clue what that is. Somebody must have moved it in here while I was sleeping. Hmm. Patients were allowed to keep personal possessions of special significance to them. This cigarette lila was a gift of Marilyn Wilson's younger sister, Jer Martha. What cigarette lila is not there? I've read it a hundred times, but I've decided to name her Teresa. That's a good, good name for someone whose daddy is named Tommy. Sure, you can have, have it. No, wait. I I'd like to look through it one more, one more time. Okay. Alright, let's read this touch screen, I guess. Oh, more reading. Alright, Marilyn Wilson. Marilyn Wilson was involuntarily committed by her parents when she began complaining of symptoms typical of pregnancy. 
She was not pregnant, but suffered instead from pseudocesis or false pregnancy, a psychosomatic disorder. After admission, she became clinically depressed and eventually slipped into catatonia, a state in which the patient does not move and oblivious to external stimulation. As with typical patients from wealthy families, her parents spread no expense to her prior room with style would make her more secure and comfortable. Yeah, I'm not so sure she wasn't she was pregnant or not. They kinda like leave that up to you for you to decide playing this game this game because I'm not so sure that her parents weren't lying to her. But uh whatever. Psychosomatic disorder. Psychosomatic disorder arises when psychological stress adversely affects the body's functions. Sometimes the patient experiences the physical symptoms without becoming aware of the psychological state that gave rise to the dysfunction. In this case, doctors believe that Miss Wilson became traumatized at worry about a classmate involved in the Korean War and believe she is pregnant, he would discharge to come home and marry her, thereby ensuring her safety. Treatment for these disorders usually involve hydrotherapy and other relaxing therapies to relieve the underlying psychological stress. In Miss Wilson's case, this treatment plan is not effective. Alright, more to look at here. Uh, pseudocystis. Did I read this? Pseudocystis is an illness that mimics the symptoms of pregnancy, including a swollen stomach, morning sickness, and even labor pains. False pregnancy also occurs in young women who are just after they decide a child, that their bodies respond accordingly, although no conception is actually taking place. When prone to pseudocystis are more secure than the general population, they frequently display memory banks, blanks, and are inclined to exotic beliefs such as ESP or alien intelligence. The condition may disappear with therapy or degenerate in a severe depressive illness, which is what happened in this case. Yeah, I'm not so sure that she was sick or not. Depression and emotional state marked by prolonged sadness, inactivity, and loss of ability to enjoy life is more common in women than men. Wow, that is really sexist again. Uh, other symptoms include loss of appetite, sleep disturbances, apathy, morbid preoccupation, worthlessness, and suicidal tendencies. Patients are likely to complain of feelings of intense hopelessness and helplessness. While regard is a purely mental problem, it is now known that depression has the basis in chemical balances in the brain. Sadly, in the 1950s, antidepressant drugs have not been developed, and treatment options were limited. Alright, catatonic schizophrenia. Catatonic schizophrenia is a very disorder in which the patient either moves or talks. Her muscles become rigid, she begins to posture, and she becomes completely withdrawn and ignoring no external stimuli. The patient may remain in the state for extended periods of time, requiring her to be in voluntary bathed and fed. Roughly one third of patients suffering from illness recover completely, another third of occasional reoccurrences, the remaining deteriorate into chronic schizophrenia, many of them dying by suicide. Prognosis is worse for younger patients, especially with lack of supporting network of family and friends. Uh, we're done talking about this. I think we can now talk to her some more because I think there might be more to t tell her now. I can't remember that. Hello again. Uh, but I'm still looking. Thanks. His, his name is Joshua. Have you seen him? Sorry. No, no. Why did you start writing everything down down? It was more of a journal, actually. When I first got, got here, I wanted to write a story about the asylum. But then, then I got so excited about the baby that I haven't written in it, in it for a long time. Mm. You can read it if you want. want. It sounds like, uh... You're a good writer. Thanks. For a long time, I wanted to be a reporter. But now I just want to stay home with the baby when she's born. You aren't having a baby. At least I think. I don't know. I don't know what you're, if you are really. What's it really like to be here? It's weird. There's this strange combination of being all alone, yet you're living in a building full of other people. The patients are mostly nice, actually. It's the attendants who act strange. Isn't that odd? That is odd. The thing I miss most is my privacy. How can you feel alone with so many people around? I miss my family. My parents told my sisters they can't visit, and Tommy is in Korea. The other patients here are nice, but I don't really know them. Mm. You've got your own room. Isn't that private enough? Well, first of all, everyone on the staff gets to look at all my records. Mm. I can understand that because they might need to know something about my medicine or something. But they go way beyond that. I think they want to make sure I'm not secretly talking with Tommy. Mm. Do you believe it? They even steam open my mail. Wow. Why do you say they act strangely? Actually, it's both the doctors and the attendants. They act as if the people here aren't really people. They don't listen. 
They treat the patients like children. Yeah. It's like as soon as someone is labeled crazy, they don't count anymore. Yeah. But a lot of the inmates here aren't really all that nuts. Or even if they are, they still deserve respect. I'm sorry. I shouldn't go on like that. It just makes me angry is all. Yeah. Two of the diary pages seem to be stuck together. Can you tell me what's on the second page? Sorry, I really don't remember. Hmm. Probably because you blocked it out. Tell me about the medical treatments. Mostly they take me down to the hydrotherapy room. I can always tell when they're taking me there because the attendant gets out that big gray key that opens oh, the door. Oh, cool. Awesome. Right now, I don't remember anything about what happens in there. Hmm. No, but that's okay. I'd rather think about the baby. Hmm. But at least you told me it's something important. I've read that the doctors don't believe you're going to have a baby. Don't be silly. Okay. It's what the doctors call pseudosiesis. Yes, but that doesn't apply to me. I'm really having a baby. How do you know? Maybe you just want to believe you're going to have a baby. That's ridiculous. Why would I choose to make my parents mad at me and let them lock me up away from all my friends? Whoever told you that is lying. Hmm. I don't know, we're done talking to you for now, I think. But at least now we can go to that hydrotherapy room. I think that's in the basement. So we can go there next, I guess. It's locked. Okay, go around that. And we can also look at the uh, information about that person that we're looking for. Uh, let's look at that information. I want to go to the um, basement and, uh, well, not the basement first. Let's go to the first floor so I can read up on her. Push this to the one. All right, let's go. And let's go into the office again. And let's see what the computer has to say about our lives. And we've already got access to it, my user. I wish I could figure out why I need to uh, know the. Um, well, let's see. Um, let's see. Marilyn Wilson. Marilyn Wilson, next to Ken Michael Wilson, 527 Harbor Street, Blackstone, New Hampshire, diagnosed upon admission. Cytosidosis, especially she's pregnant, although she was not. Restraint under therapy, reason for discharge, deceased, suicide. Oh, wow. Holy shit, so she died. She committed suicide. That's sad, dude. That is extremely sad. This case in the years of the patient completed, she's given birth even after since the pregnancy disappeared. It believes she's making progress, however, until the time for death. That is sad. So she never got out of the asylum and she committed suicide. That's fucking depressing. Okay, let's go, um, I guess go to the basement now and look at the hydrotherapy room. Wow, that, that was depressing as fuck. What does this guy have to say about anything he's done? Yes, Oliver? You're a bastard. Why did you take it? Are you sure I took it? Are you certain it wasn't you? Perhaps the museum people simply haven't placed it there yet. You are lying. Where did you hide it? Oh, Oliver. You forget my goal. I want you to explore the asylum to rekindle your old memories. Even if I did take the lighter, I would scarcely tell you where it is. Mm, you're an asshole. Did she really have a baby? Marilyn was a very sick girl. You must remember that when you speak with her. Uh-huh. You're a prick. I don't trust anything you have to say. <laughs> I don't know 
let's check out the hydrotherapy room. Wow. Malcolm Metcalf is a just a, a bastard. I mean, seriously, he. I, I want to uh, kill him, but I know he's already dead, so. Alright, let's go in here. Hello? M my name is Jane. Who are you? My name is Oliver. It's, it's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet, to meet you too. Although the circumstances aren't very pleasant. Yeah. Please leave them where they are. They've caused enough misery. Yeah. For sis? The, the restraints were used to ensure the patients didn't harm themselves when in the tub or while using other equipment. Although they may have, may have caused some discomfort, they were there for the good of the patients. No, they weren't. I, I hated them. They made me feel like a prisoner. Mm. Nothing good could come from that. Right. Jet nozzles allowed therapists to stimulate specific body parts with a high-speed flow of water. Uh. You take off your clothes and they shoot this water at you. It really, really stung. Wow. Especially if they just kept spraying in one spot. Wow. Just wow. Okay, hydrotherapy. For ancient times, drinking and bathing in thermal springs has been an effective therapeutic activity. It's found in development of spa towns all over the world where people travel to take the waters. Hydrotherapy is the modern descendant of this activity and it's expanded to include the first forms of water treatment as soothing baths, inferior ingestive water, wet packs, steam boxes, and saunas. In the therapeutic environment, the primary purpose of hydrotherapy is to control the body's temperature either raising it or lowering it according to the demands of treatment plan. Treatments also have the beneficial side effect of improving circulation. Yeah, but I don't think there's anything therapeutic about anything in this damn asylum. Tubs. Cold baths decrease the body's temperature, causing blood vessels to close and reducing blood flow. They were generally prescribed to calm or severe ability. Tubs you see here were large enough for patients to completely submerge themselves in water. The limits help keep the water temperature constant. Yeah. Steam mass. Steam heat relieves pain and improves circulation and induces a relaxed state of breast, which makes the animal therapy shaded in hyperactive patients. Heat causes an increase in met metabolic rate and pulse. Blood vessels expand and more blood rate reaches its extremities. After emerging from the chamber, subjects are being more relaxed, have a lowered heart rate and lower blood pressure. Okay. What else would be saying there? Saunas. Precursor of the modern sauna. The dry heat chamber you see here was designed to remove toxins from the body through perspiration. The heat opened the pores and skin, the patient's sweat, flushed, impurities, and the system. The chamber was also used a primitive sensory deprivation device. Patients were enclosed for extended periods during the excessive stim external stimuli that were believed to bring on manic episodes. Okay, wet packs. Cold cloth compresses for effect in reducing heat headaches, relaxing muscle spasm, reducing body heat in patients with high fevers. Contemporary research also began inducing hypothermia, brought periods of mental clarity to mute aggressive combative and uncooperative patients. Wow. Inducing hypothermia? That is fucked up. Other pack methods include the Bremen patient rubber sheets for immersing the cold bath. This drugs are made much more efficient with the introduction of the thermal right blanket, more popularly known as a mummy bag. Patients who have been presided by an refrigerant soon circulated through it, achieving a much swifter decline in body temperature. Wow. Just just wow. I feel like this place was a, a torture chamber. The whole place is a torture chamber. Like, I have nothing to, uh... They wrapped us in those rubber sheets for hours at a time. Do we need one? Okay, I guess we need one. Ah, cool. What do we need it for? I have no idea. Those are massage oils. But I never heard of an inmate getting a massage. Mm hmm Epsom salts. But you had to bribe the attendants to use them. Wow. Just... Epsom some salts. Epsom epsom salt. Same thing? Epsom some salt. What's this? I think they stock the shells just for show. Mmm, that's... We were supposed to put our personal belongings on the shelves while we were in Hydro. But sometimes they disappeared, so no one did. Wow. That is fucked up. So basically they stole from you. That's just great. This place seems like a hellhole to me. Uh, 
equipment. It's all very confusing. I don't know what everything does. Mm. Once it's locked down, there's no poking out. Mm. They called it the Hydra. They'd put you inside and, and put, put a lid on top so you couldn't get out. Then they'd fill it with ice water. After a while, you'd rather be dead than go back in there. Wow. It's so heavy, it used to take two attendants to lift it. Hmm. It's all very con- There was a secret code that they used to turn the machines on and off. They never let me see what it was. Hmm. I guess we gotta figure out what that code is. We scrub those walls. What's this? They'd keep keep us in there for hours at a time, but it never seemed to help much. Open that. Oh, we gotta put something in there. Oh. Wait a minute. I know what we can put in here. Oh, steam box. Can this will this work? Nothing's happened up in Hmm, we gotta figure out how to fix that. Hmm. It's just We scrub Okay. We sc What's this? <clears throat> Must be some trick to it. Yes? Oh, okay. Were, were you sick? I'm not sure. I, I became confused. I, I think life outside became too overwhelming for me. I believe, believe they called it a nervous breakdown. Mm. I mean, is it important to you in some way? Why can I talk to you when, when I'm looking at it? I don't, I don't know. Except I have a deadly fear of being tra trapped inside. Maybe that's it. Maybe. What, what did you talk about? Oh, oh yes. All we ever talked about was going home. It was the guiding star. The beacon ahead. The goal for which we existed. That's sad. Home. We talked about it constantly, endlessly. Every day we, we woke up wondering if that day would be the day. Even a criminal knows when he's going to get out. But we were in prison with no release date. With only the hope of one day returning to her husband and children. That is depressing. What was it like? It was... harsh. I suppose there was something wrong with us, and they were, they were only trying to help. But it was very difficult. I don't believe anyone out outside really knows what happens in these institutions. Yeah. I suppose they're better off not knowing. Mm-hmm. What finally I had to you? Oh, I finally got to go home. I don't remember much about that anymore. But I do know that it made me very, very happy. Okay, so she finally got to go home. That's nice, at least. Alright, uh... Much better than Marilyn Wilson that I read about. Jeez. What about depressing? It's all very confusing. I don't know. Okay. There was a secret code that they used to turn the machines on and on and off. They never let me see what it was. Huh. I don't know. I have no idea what it, what to shit. I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to push here. Maybe there's something I'm supposed to do here, but I have no idea what it is. Now you're supposed to find out. There's gotta be one to find out. Because I wouldn't just like 
give me this or that, some kind of like information. There has to be a way to figure it out. But, uh, I don't know. You got anything to say, asshole? Yes, Oliver. I guess not. Okay. Hmm. There has to be a way to do this, but I don't remember what it was. Okay, so I push. What am I supposed to do to do this? I mean, I forget. Work, works fine. Works fine now. No. Oh, okay. So I just pushed two buttons, and I guess I pushed the right two buttons. Then, all right, cool. Does it work now? Cool. All right, we can finally read this. Uh, the steam pages of the diary now. I think there are monsters down here. Freddy will scare away the monsters, Josh. Just like he always does. He's a good watchdog. Aww. Alright, we can open this now. Open steam box. And let us take the diary out and read the pages that are steamed. Because we couldn't read them before. Now we can. Let's read this again. I don't think I remember which page to go to. I already read all this. Took me to the furnace room in the basement, which is pretty strange because I never heard a patient going in there for treatment. Okay. Okay, now we get to finally read this episode. Today, Dr. McCaff took me down to the furnace room, just like he said he would. He unlocked the door with a key with a big square head and took me inside. Somehow, he had gotten a hold of my high school yearbook, the one with the signatures of all my friends in it. Wow, what an asshole. He told me to learn to shoot fancy reality, and then he threw the book right into the furnace. Wow, that is just... This guy is an asshole. I can now head to the furnace, then. Uh, furnace room and look at... See what's in there to be found. Probably can find a fuse in there. I'm hoping. I don't know why we need to uh, get that, but uh, I'm sure we'll... Uh figure it out. I know, let's get out of here. This place is creep this place is depressing me. At least she got to go home though. Alright, this room. That's ECT. Fever therapy now. Maybe go there. At least not yet. What's this? The furnace room. Alright, cool. Alright, let's expect this room now. Can I help you, lad? Okay. What are you doing here? I'm just an old Irishman who left left home looking for a better life. It's it true I didn't starve. But I'm, I'm not sure I found what I was looking for. Hmm. What do you think of it? It is a hard place, lad. And there's not much difference between the people in inside and the ones outside who are walking around and breathing God's fresh air. Mm -hmm. And if I were one of those people, free and easy and do doing what I pleased, it would scare me senseless to know that. Mm -hmm. Who keeps things running? Oh, the new new lad. The one they have here here now. He's doing fine. They'll not be missing old Seamus or so work. Seamus or work? <laughs> Why don't you leave? One day they'll come in and replace all this old machinery. Then, then it'll be time for me to move on. Okay. Alright. Let us look around. I could build anything I could. Whatever they needed around here, I used to make it myself. Right at this bench. Uh -huh. 
Annie's the hour I rested my old bones there. Get along with you. Find your, your own place to sit down. <laughs> Leave that that be. I like it right there. Okay. Off the markers. Don't, don't go poking your nose where it doesn't belong. There's, <laughs> there's nothing in there that concerns you. Okay. They're old and abandoned, just like me. Huh. Okay. Ah, oh, this is the furnace. They certainly don't make them like that anymore. Hot! Oh, yeah? It's bolted shut. Bolted shut, alright. I gotta open that somehow, I think. I can't remember why. Okay, now I can open it. Uh, okay, before I try and get that, I'm going to save. Because I think this is going to trigger a one of those um, thingamajiggies, if I'm not mistaken. I think I can use these to get this. Yes! Perhaps you were never aware, Oliver, that some items can carry evil within them themselves. Uh-oh. Yeah. This is where we have one of those time puzzles. Dragon Lighter, for example, has caused you to fall under its fiery spell. Really? Marilyn Wilson burned herself to death with it. Martha Ward used it to burn her house down. Who is Martha Ward? Even now, it is propelling you towards some unknown, but no doubt, searing fate. Right. I wonder, Oliver, will you be able to take the heat? Okay, I forget what I'm supposed to do here. Okay, I think... Uh, use the... Oh, yeah, reflect the lighter. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's also... Caused you to do something. You're trapped! What am I supposed to do? I forget. 90 deg degrees. The, the patient suffers heat cramps from the loss of fluid in his muscles. Okay, I've got to figure out how to turn it. Okay, here we go. Yes, there we go. That's what I need to do. Open the box. That's how we open that. Okay. I remember now. Yeah, to, to trick this so we can open. Yeah. Very so, clever, Oliver. Well done. Okay, I'm gonna reload because I'm gonna show you death. Yes, you can die in this game, so I'm gonna show it to you real quick. Reload here. I'm going to pick up the lighter again. Perhaps you were never aware, Oliver, that some items Yeah, yeah, I've already seen this. Merely picking up that I dragon don't... lighter, for example. I don't care. Can I save here? Yes, I can. Okay, cool. I'm going to save here. And then I'm just going to let myself, well, do this. You're trapped. Yeah, I know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going to just let myself die real quick so I can show you the death. Oh, gee. I have no idea what the to do. Suffers or eat cramps from the loss of fluid and in his muscles. I have no idea what to do. What can I possibly do to get out of here? I'm, I'm gonna die. Oh no. Open the box. I'm not worried. I know what to do. The need needle's going up. Yeah, I know. I know what to do. I mean, gee, I have no idea what I could possibly do to get out of this. As the temperature rises, blood vessels near the surface of the skin dilate to increase heat loss. And I just As love the blood thick thickens, circulation become, becomes poor. I love like the clinical way that he talks about his son dying. I was like, whatever. The, the needle's in the red. You've got to get out of there. Eh, don't worry about it. Nah. One.
105 degrees heat exhaustion. The body's normal chemical reactions become impaired. As oxygen to the brain is reduced, the patient becomes dizzy and his breathing becomes labored. This is the level at which brain damage becomes a possibility. Wow. The way you just clinically talk about that is Quick, just... Quick! Before it's too late! I'm not worried about it. I'm dead. Do something! One hundred thirty degrees. More than ten seconds at this level will cook the, the patient's brain and cause heat stroke. Mm -hmm. The tongue shrivels. Vision grows dim. Hearing deteriorates. Bloody cra cracks appear in the skin. Wow. And death follow shortly. Yeah, I imagine so. I'm dead. It is too late. Oh no! I'm dead. I had thought you were made of sterner -ster stuff, Oliver. Mm. Well, well, well. All right. Okay. Uh, restore to move before the puzzle starts. Well, actually, you know what? I don't need to do that. I'm just going to restore to the. I'm going to reload this because I know what to do. Get out of here. Use the lighter. Flip the lighter. There we go. And we'll get out of there. Voila. Yeah. Very clever, Oliver. Well done. Yes, well done indeed. I'm gonna save here. Because we've averted death. So as you can see, you can't die, but it's really hard to do because, like, you have a very quick, you have a long time limit before you can act, before you actually die. I'm gonna figure out what I'm supposed to do now with this lighter, though. What am I supposed to do with this lighter? I mean, I forget. I'm sure it's something to do with... Do I still have that wrench or do they get rid of that? No, I still got the wrench. So I guess we still need it for something. Hmm. Alright, let's keep going. Go back in here and look around some more. Because I'm sure there's more to do. I still forget what the hell I'm supposed to do with that, to get that. Ah, oh, we need the fuse, that's right. Those would be your number three fuses. Industrial. We use them for most of the heavy equipment. Okay. Cool. But be careful with that now. Don't hurt yourself. Right. Okay, I'll put this in the... What do we need to do that with that, though? Good. Again, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with That's that. That's my old lightweight motor oil. It's amazing how long machines will work for you. All you have to do is take care of them. <laughs> Naval jelly. That'll take the rust off just about anything. Okay. I'm surprised at how little the light bulb has changed after all these years. Finishing nails. I use them for smaller jobs. Roofing nails. Lord knows we went through enough of them. Different size washers. The plumbing in this building is atrocious. Navel jelly. That'll take... It's just, just odd bits the new man found lying about and didn't want to throw, throw away. Smart lad, that. Waste not, want not. Okay. It's just odd bits than you. I'm surprised at 
Ten penny nails. For knocking together two by fours. Okay. We don't need to do the furnace anymore because we've already opened it. We already did what we need to do with it. So, let's go this way. Let's see if there's anything else to be found in here. Hmm. What's this? Ah, you'll go daft, lad, if you try to figure out where all those pipes go. Leave that to an old expert like me. Okay. Uh... This... Uh... Hardly enough hot water to do the dishes. But Malcolm wouldn't permit me to put in more capacity. Cold showers are good for the patients, he used to say. Hmm. Hardly enough hot hot water to I can remember that. Uh is this Hardly enough hot water Oh old reliable that one. Not not like that sow of a generator. Hmm. Nasty business. That water is causing no end of mischief. Hmm. That's a new one, that is. You won't find a key for it on that big ring of yours. Oh, uh, okay. That was shocking, anyway. The shock will, will knock your eye teeth out. Uh. Better turn off that, that water first. Hmm, I wonder. Can I use it, perhaps? I wonder. Maybe? I guess not. I thought maybe I could just, like, better turn that water off. I think that's what the fuses are for. I need to turn that, uh, use the fuse or something, I think. So I think it involves this. Let's see if I'm right. It's been so long since I played this game, I can't remember. Let's see the... Empty. We sh shut down the oil burner years, years ago. Alright, let's go back to the, uh... Let's go back to the... First floor. And let's try that fuse. Oh, no, alright. Oh, inside the elevator. All right, let's head to the first floor now. Right. Let's see here. Here. Forget it, it's this way or the other way. Oh, that's a chapel. That's the wrong way then. No, oh, that's actually this way. Alright, this way then. Let's go in here. And head back through this annoying room with the music. to the kitchen. Alright, let's uh, put the uh, open box. And let's replace it with a new fuse. Ta-da! Not sure why we need to do that, but... That got cold in a hurry. Yes, it did. Mm. Doesn't budge. Huh. Mm. Doesn't budge. Okay, so we don't need to open it then. Then why the hell did we need to fix this freezer anyway? 
Oh, is it because it has something to do with the uh, water downstairs? Maybe that's the case. Well, let me, uh... Let's go back to the basement then. I should put the cigarette lighter back in that girl's place now that I found it. Or do I still need it for something? Forget. Mm. Let's uh, head back to the. Uh... What's this guy have to say? I always like to check and see what this asshole has to say if he's got anything new to say. Yes, Oliver? Nah, he doesn't. Okay. Let's, uh,. Head back to the basement then and check out the uh, furnace room again because I think we need to get that locket. I forget why, but I do know we need the locket for some reason. See, it's coming back to me. Like I said, I've played this game before, it's just been, you know, years. So I might forget some things or not remember it first. So let's get back to the furnace room over here. I still don't know why we need to get the, the locket though. I'm sure there's a reason for it, but damn if I don't if I know why. Ah, as you can see. It looks safe now. Mm-hmm. You'll need more than your bare hair hands for that. Well, what about this? That's not. What about uh this knife? No. What about this? Okay, we can't saw it with that. Okay, we gotta figure out what we can saw it up with. Because apparently I don't have the item necessary yet. Okay, so apparently I don't have the item yet that will allow me to cut that open. Hmm. Well, I've partially solved the problem then. I just gotta figure out how to cut the padlock off. Hmm. Well, damn. Thought we had solved something, but I guess we hadn't quite solved it yet. We still got to, uh, Maybe I can, um, do something with, what's her name now that I got her lighter? Maybe something else will happen now that I've done that. Again, it's been, you know, years since I played this game, so. Alright, let's head back to the second floor. And go back and talk to Marilyn. Marilyn Wilson. Mm -hmm. Alright, so this the... That's the men's way we don't want At least not yet. We want to go back through here. So we can, I think, put her lighter back. I can't remember why we need to do that. Maybe it's just because we're trying to be nice to her? But I don't know. Anyway, let's put her lighter back where it belongs. I remember now. 
They killed my baby. Oh, shit. Then I killed myself. Wow. How can I be dead and still talking to you? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Mm -hmm. So she... So they killed her baby, supposedly. I don't know if that's true or not. Again, I don't know what to believe. Thank you. Joshua is being held there. Can you help me find it? I'm afraid I don't know too much much about the asylum layout. I was only here a short time before I died. died. But the women in the hall might be able to help you. If you can get them to make sense. Hmm. They're a little... crazy. The key to the corridor door, door had a big W stamped on it. On there it. we go. It's sure to be on your key, key ring. Awesome. So you should be able to open it right up. up. Awesome. Okay, cool. Alright, let's, uh, head over there then. Okay, so that's why we gotta talk to her again. Got it. Wow, that's sad. But they... That key opens it right up. Yep. Alright, here we go. Talking to more of these people. Dick's suspense are there. I don't think... Okay, I'm oh, sorry. Okay, we got some people to talk to here, I think. We go through this door? Or is this room locked? It's locked. Okay. Okay, this door... Um, okay, there's only one room to go in. At least I think, I... Because it looks like it's the only one that's, uh, that will work. I'll right, see who's in here. Are there bad guys here, Dad? Nope, no bad guys. I love except you. Except my, Dad. except my grandpa. I love you too. Except Josh. your grandpa. Your grandpa's a real bad guy. You there? You're, you're new. Did you bring my knitting needles? Knitting needles. Uh. Uh, I'm afraid not. Well then, be all go with you. Uh, I've got some shears though. Will those work? The tapestries are delicate. Please, do not disturb them. Okay. Oh, what's this? That is where my handkerchief belongs. Hmm. Your handkerchief? Ms. Willoughby was an accomplished seamstress, embroiderer, and weaver, as witnessed by the beautiful tapestries around the wall, and the exquisite handkerchief you see here. Hmm. Yes? I don't, don't believe we've been introduced. Such impertinence in us in a servant. I shall have Sir George re reprimand you. Who's he? He, he is my host. If you can call it like that. Hmm. What would you do with them? A servant does not question the commands of a queen. Fetch them, please. You are, dis are dismissed. Okay. Right. Uh, let's look at this screen and read up on her. Lavina Willoughby. Lavina Willoughby, some of the delusions, she was Mary Queen of Scots. Due to places, generally believe build intricate structures to fold their beliefs. They frequently believe they are a romantic figure from the past who separates the romantic and stereo. This form of belief is generally confused with the much rarer multiple personality disorder. Miss Willoughby's original treatment plan called for fever therapy, and after being infected, she was put on a mild shock program, which first took the form of metrazol injections when finally insulin treatment. Schizophrenia. Once you turn public things about schizophrenia's first personality, it's actually a much rarer disorder called multiple personality disorder, which only a few hundred cases have been dedicated. True schizophrenia, from which Miss Willoughby suffered, is a much more common disease, directing about three persons per thousand, and is the largest single cause of admissions to mental hospitals. The principal symptoms of schizophrenia are delusions, hallucinations, incorrect thought processes, and a withdrawal from reality. Four general types are recognized, disorganized, catatonic, paranoid, and undifferentiated. Uh, delusion disorders. Several types of delusion disorders are recognized. Miss Willoughby suffered from two of them. Grandiose type in which the patient identifies with a deity or a famous person, and persecutory type, where the patient believes she has been malevolently treated in some way. Delusional systems are quite adaptable, and when confronted with evidence that contradicts their beliefs, 
Patients generally find a way to twist that evidence to support the world view they have built for themselves. Apart from the impact of the research itself, the patient's function is usually not impaired, nor does the behavior become obviously odd or bizarre. Multiple personality disorder. Multiple personalities are an extremely rare condition in which two or more independent personalities are often the same individual. The patient is generally aware of only one of these personalities at a time. This is not the case of Ms. Woodby. She constantly believed she was Mary Queen of Scots from day to day and did not lapse into original or other identities. Treatment of the condition is generally aimed at re integrating the personalities into one, is an encouraging the dominant personality to recognize the existence of the others and by removing the underlying cause of the original disassociation. Mary Queen of Scots. Mary Queen of Scots was one of figures in history. She was crowned Queen of Scotland for her first birthday. At age 15, she married the King of France, but returned to Scotland after he died two years later. Many viewed her as the Michael Queen of England instead of the first, and as the new schemes and plots to place on England's throne eventually led to her execution. For the last 18 years of her life, she lived as this was prisoner in a series of castles. It was hardly like a privatization. She fit to retain his own household. She was more like a house guest of a jailer, George Talbot, the sixth Earl of Shrewsbury. It was only very reluctance that Elizabeth eventually succumbed to physical pressure in order her cousin to be headed. The order was carried out in the Great Hall at Florida Castle. Mary was only 44. Wow, that's fucked up. Uh, done here. And I think we can... Can we talk to her? They were taken from me by Sir Sir George. Mm. Actually, they weren't prop proper knitting needles at all. They were cur curious eating sticks from the Orion. Yes, I know where those are. They worked are. just as well. I, I know. In captivity, one must Im improvise. Hmm. Right, I know where they are, actually. I know where I placed them. Where do I place these knitting needles? Uh, here, I guess? I mean, shit, I don't know where to put them. But I think that's what we need these for. Put skewers in box. At last. At last. You are more than a servant. You are a friend. Thank you for providing me the only implements by which my imprisonment becomes tolerable. Hmm. Who is Sir George? Why do you call him your host? George Talbot. The, the Earl of Shrewsbury. This is Castle. He has been commissioned by my cousins and Queen Elizabeth to detain me. Right. Little does she know, no, he brings dishonor upon both of our royal houses. Right. What does he do? He tortures me. Mm. He takes me to the dungeon and uses a key with a skull pattern on it. Thank you. To open a small room. There he forces foul emetics and purgatives down my throat. Mm. Sometimes he bleeds me until I am dizzy and become faint. What does he hope to gain? He wishes me to confess to conspiracies against my dear cousin. When I refuse to do so, he opens a special casket he sometimes has with him. Inside are vials filled with poisons that give me fevers and chills. Mm. Have you told anyone else about this? Only Lorena, the prisoner next door. She's very difficult to talk to, but she, but she knows more than she's willing to say. She is heavily guarded, but the key to her part of the prison has the number 26 engraved on it. Ah, more places we can go. Is there anything I can do to help? It is all a horrible misunderstanding. My cousin thinks I plot with the King of Spain against her. If only I could write to her and send a token of my affection, she would realize how wrong wrong she is. Okay. To do so, I need a pen and some ink, both of which are currently denied me. Hmm. It sounds as if you have something particular in mind. I have embroidered a special handkerchief for mm. her. It is the finest craftsmanship, and Rah. it has the letter R worked into the corner. Hmm. And now you can't find it? Alas, Sir George has stolen it from me. Mm. I suspect he has hidden it within his casket of poisons. You knock him at Where that may be, I have no idea. You knock a Metcalf, basically. Elizabeth doesn't begin with R. Uh, I forget you are a servant, unschooled in Latin. R is for Regina, which means queen. 
I must find him before dawn. Just as you aid me, so shall I aid you. Uh, okay. Sure. Let's look around here. Knitting really doesn't make up for being free, but it does pass the time. Okay, look at the table. It is made of sandalwood, imported from Spain. Uh, really? Seeing the world beyond only makes my captivity hot hotter. Hmm. Okay, look at that. I don't need to look at the yarn anymore. Look at embroidery hoop. It holds my needlework in place while I work on it. Hmm. I don't need to look at that anymore. Can I look at this thing? Uh, so I can now talk to someone else. It was a wedding gift, but oh dear, I forget which wedding. Hmm. It is as handsome, isn't it? It was given to me by Lord Darnley. Really? I have no doubt of your loyalty. Still, there are secrets you should not know. Right. It shows me coming to Scotland. I had been Queen of France until my, my husband died. I was I was only 18. Sure you were. It is ha Okay, can I go this way or Hmm. I don't know if she's now this person I'm more inclined to believe she's, you know, just weird. Eighteen years now I have slept in that mat bed. I hope I do not die in it. Let's see what happens when we do this. <laughs> Aren't you the saucy one? <laughs> but if Sir George were to fi find out, we would both regret it. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Aren't you the saucy one? There is. That's funny. Okay. Uh... Many an hour have I sat that there and done my needlework. What's this one? Many any an hour. I said that. It is the sea siege of Calais. I wove it myself. Right. Uh... Did I look at anything else in here, or is that it? Hmm. Well, I can probably find another place person now, since I have... Oh, this. The stone is Carrara marble. From Italy. Right. These table tables were a gift from the King of France. We sure about that? They give me enough light to do my needlework work, so I am happy. Okay, so basically Sir George is, um, I'm sure it's Malcolm. That's what I could think of anyway. Let's take me to the other one. Okay, that takes me back the way I was already. I want to see if I can go this way though. Because I think I can open the door now. So let's see if it works. Yes! That back he opens it right up. Awesome. Let's go talk to the other uh, person here. Mm, oh, no. Like that, eh? Okay, I want to go in there, I guess. Is there anything else to do with this way, though? I'm going to check this. Okay, there is uh, nothing more to be seen here. It's locked. I guess we don't need to go in there. Either that, or it's just locked and we can't go in there. Not yet, anyway. But I think the only other patient we can visit in here is um, this person behind us. Uh, I didn't mean to go. I didn't mean to go back through there. <laughs> Seriously. I meant to go back through here and go through the door. That was open there. Stupid game. Yeah, okay. Let's see what, uh, what we can find in here. Hmm. Who are you? Freddy's tired, Dad. Maybe he can take a nap, Josh. It's way past his bedtime. 
He told me he's too scared to sleep. I'm scared too. I know, Josh, but everything will be okay. Mm -hmm. I'll be there as soon as I can. Are you one of Malcolm's spies? Go away. I'm not. Who are you? You? What do you want? I'm a friend. I don't believe you. you. Everyone here works for Malcolm. He is an evil man. Very clever. That that just what one of his spies would say. Okay, I'm rude here. What can I do to convince you? Very well. I shall give you a few chance. Malcolm has stolen many, many things from me. He keeps most of them hidden away, and some he has given to others. But one of them he keeps on display, knowing knowing pain it causes me. I know what it is. Bring me me that item, and I will know you are not in, in league with him. Okay, sure. But how do I know? How do I uh, look at the? My father gave me that locket on my 16th birthday. Ah. He died only a week later. I need to give that to her. They are from Paris. The latest fashion. Alright. Time to read up on her. Lorena. The face in this room we wish to be known as Lorena. Suffering from paranoia and other reason for people plotting against her. Lorena was a wealthy woman and an active member of high society at the time she was committed. She developed the unfettered fear that her husband was unfaithful to her, and persisted so quickly grew out of control. At a mission in she claimed her husband had in prison so he could gain control of her money, an accusation typical of the paranoid syndrome. Lorena was one of Dr. Metcalf's few private patients. His treatment plan resisted on exclusive electroconvulsive therapy. Wow. Seriously. Wow. Paranoia is one of the four major subcategories of schizophrenia. People who suffer, I believe, but not just in case others are plotting against them, are those persecuting or trying to harm them. Paranoid patients provide off by the who's active loyalty or trustworthiness of friends or associates, and is reluctant to confine others because of fear that the information will be used when it's against her. The Reina suffer from a particular type of paranoia called delusional jealousy, which comes from the delusion to believe that their spouse is having sexual relations with someone else, or maybe they actually are having sexual relations with someone else, and you we're just lying about it. Even the advent of modern pharmaceutical drug treatments, electrocompulsive therapy, still remains the most effective life and balance mental illness. Though public denials and unfairly stigmatized movements such as one called Cuckoo's Nest, it was humanly administered and still widespread use today. Although not theoretical for an electrocompulsive discovery of success, electroshock is considered safer, easier to administer, less expensive, and easier on the patients than metroshock shock treatments. Okay. Alright, we're done here, I think. Can I take those, or man? Stop! You must leave them alone! Okay, I guess you don't want me to take those. I need to help her, though. I forget what I need to do to help her. I know that I need to take the... They are part of the set given to me by my mother. It's black lacquer on walnut. Quite attractive. But it shows every speck of dust. <laughs> the pots come from Prinish Abbey, near Painswick in England. Artificial, unfortunately. Artificial. It's a temporal design after a Gregoire original. <laughs> the pot pots come from Prinish Abbey. They are part of the set. It is a piece by a new artist, Derek Becker. <laughs> okay, I can give her this, but uh, how do I give it to her? I forget. Hmm. It's Florentine leather. Ah, uh, can I? It's Florentine. Wait a minute. Fancy. Can I take that? Okay, cool. Uh, let me use the uh, compact. Open compact. Okay. What's this? Doesn't look too useful. Hmm. I can take the makeup there. 
Ah, I know what I need to do. I need to get back to that other woman. Doesn't look. Uh, look in mirror. Hmm. Pretty handy for seeing if someone sneaking up behind you. Yes. Let's use this. How do I? Nothing in there. Okay. Look at coffee pot. M M. M M. Malcolm Metcalf? No, it's not his. I'm pretty sure it's hers. But I gotta figure out how to, uh... Hmm. Anything else to look in here? No. But I do have the, uh... Ink that that woman wanted. And I, also, I need to find her handkerchief, though. can't remember where the hell that is. Done in there. And just don't be be rude. Okay, no. Okay, where do I give her the? They are salves and and creams prescribed by some of the, of the finest doctors in the East. I have sensitive skin. Right. I always keep the shades drawn on. It is so gloom gloom out there. Sure, it's not because you're pretty. They are they are, they are salves. Spying on you. Because, you know, you are paranoid, supposedly. I mean, who knows if she is or not. I mean... It's a Giuliano original. I mean, I'm not really inclined to trust anything Malcolm has to say about anything. How do I show this to her? Just one minute, young man. How do I know that pot is mine? Uh... It matches your cup cups and saucers. Yes, but but many pots look this the same. There is some something special about my my coffee pot. And until you can tell tell me what it is, I re I refuse to believe you have truly truly true carried out my re request. Okay, well how do I find out? But it's uh like how do I do that? Jeez, you're a pain. Uh, uh. Can I open the compact and... I uh, uh, Doesn't look too... Can I use this on uh, No. I forget what I need to do with the... Um, to get her to believe me about that. I mean, how do I... I mean, I don't remember that. I mean, I'm sure there was something that I did, but I... It's been so long, you know? I could try heading to the, uh... Metro, uh... Well, not to... Like, shock therapy. It's one of the room that, uh... I was able to open now. I might be able to give this to what's her name, though. Let's see... If this is what I need to give to her. Let's see, where do I place it? Yes, where do I place this? Is I place it on the desk, the table, or wait a minute. Okay, make up. Ah. Ah wait a minute. Still wet after all these years. Hmm. I guess the liquid part is in there. Okay. Do I need to give that to her? Or this? I mean, I forget. Again, I forget what I'm supposed to do. I might have to look up some of this stuff because I can't remember. Building pot. Ah, yes. Go. Thank you. But I still lack a pen. Well, I've got one right here, actually. At least I think this is a pen. Hell. Let me know. Uh, mm. Oh, anyway. Wait a minute. Um. Do I need to find out? 
Okay. Well, where am I supposed to find a damn can? I could have sworn this was it. Okay, I need to figure out where a pen is. <laughs> Maybe the pen will be found in another location. I'll try the uh, basement. This is where we want to go, I forget. No, this takes us back here, which we've already... I want to go back to the elevator. So I need to head back this way. Yeah, see, it's, it's easy to get lost in this fucking place. Still need to figure out how to get the damn uh, pen that I need for her, but I don't know where I'm supposed to get that. I wonder, does this bass have anything to say? Yes, Oliver? You're a piece of shit, just so you know. What made me climb into that heat chamber? The lighter has an evil all its own. You fulfill under its spell. Uh-huh. I don't, don't believe it. That is one, one of the only two logical explanations, Oliver. The other is that you yourself are going insane. Mm. Which do you prefer? I think you're insane, but, uh, that's beside the point. I also think you're a psychopath. Uh, Alright, let's head to the basement. There was a room that we need to go in here, I forget what room it was, because We've now got another key. But I forget which one it was. We've already been in the... That's the height of the ship. We more we haven't been going there yet. Okay, that is ECT. We don't need to go there yet. This is puber therapy. Yeah, this is the room we need to go in now. Let's see what that was in here. And who's in here? I'd offer you a chair, son, but I don't think you'd want one. The name's Nick. Mm hmm Right. What the hell do we even come in here for? Oh, I know. This. Oh, they, they knew more ways to cut a body open than a dog has fleas. Ah, uh, we can take those, I think. You leave those be. Enough, enough people have been hurt with them already. Okay, maybe not. What are we supposed to take that? Of all the contraptions she's ever invented to stick inside a body, that was the most painful. If them doctors was ever to use one of them things on themselves, they would have invented something to do the next day. Trust me, son. Glisters were used by the medical staff to evacuate the bowels of the patients. That's a polite way of saying they stuck it up your behind and squeezed it. <laughs> Lancets and scarificators were used to bleed the patients. It was believed that that doing so would bring their bodily humors back into balance. Bull ho hockey! <laughs> they did it to keep us weak so we couldn't fight back. Alright, let's 
read up on this creepy spot. Uh, Apothecary. The earliest theories of mental illness revolved around the theory of the humorous sickness it was thought was caused by an abundance of one of the four essential bullets in the body. Blood fleeing cholera, yellow bile, and melancholy, black bile. The most common method of brain fluid and balance was bloodletting. Additionally, they should be purgatives to empty their bowels from medics to make them vomit. Ravens remember the event of metrazole and insulin shock treatments, and those in turn eventually supplemented by various speed therapies. When not being used to any of these patients, this room also served as solitary, in order to confine unruly patients until they calm down. Yeah, right. Fever therapy. Prior to World War I, an Austrian doctor named Julius Wagner von Jarug became convinced that high body temperatures caused by fever would kill the infection that caused mental illness. He experimented on patients injecting them with tuberculosis, type of fever, recurrent fever, and Ruthless, but did not move with success. After one kind of soldier poured it with a different type of fever, malaria, he drew blood and injected into some of his patients. He reported that half of them improved. Really, really. Wagner George worked in the Stuzask and received his word in the 1927 Nobel Prize for Medicine. Malaria therapy in its standard phrase and treating schizophrenics, and was not discredited as an effective treatment until many years later. Yeah, yeah. Gee, I, I wonder why it was discredited. I mean, it was because, like, you can just give people malaria and be like, oh, that worked. No. Because there are different kinds of therapy, different kinds of fever, dude. You like, can't just give the same person malaria and cure them other fevers. <laughs> insulin coma treatment was done for Sokol, a Vietnamese doctor who had been using insulin as a tranquilizer for morphine acts and withdrawal. We accidentally gave an overdose from his patient. She went into a coma. She didn't recover. Sakeo thought he could say to improve her mental state. Sakeo developed a course of treatment based on the hypothesis inducing insulin shock in a patient so that, what the fuck? It's an alternate mental illness. The treatment called for patients to be injected with enough insulin to send them into coma. After a appropriate amount of time, during his patient suffered a series of violent convulsions, during the patient with a dose of glucose to counteract the insulin. The mortality for insulin treatment was about 6 per 1,000, and brain damage occurred in blue cell of the about 8.5 per 1,000. Yeah. So it went really good. Okay. In 1935, Lydia's von Meduna, a Hungarian physician, noted that epileptic patients rather became schizophrenic. Believing the epileptic seizure somehow permits psychosis, he was having to disconvolve in schizophrenic patients through artificial means. He initially used camphor, but he eventually settled on the synthetic preparation of metrazole. The refuge of metrazole therapy was being extensive in the United States by 1940, first mental institutions including their treatment plants. Although the original the epileptics cannot become schizophrenic, turned out to be false. Treatments to avoid problem of hospital physicians. The major dropping through with the injuries accompanied the violent convulsions, mostly fractures of the femur, arm, scapula, spine, and jaw, also secured a pretty good, roughly down to the brain of spontaneous recovery. People got better without treatment. No, really? Wow. Okay. Let's, uh, why do I need to come in here anyway? I forget. There's gotta be some reason I'm in here. That's where they catch your blood when they open you in your vein. You got no idea what it was like to sit there and watch your blood drain out. Knowing if the orderly doesn't come back in time, you'll bleed to death. I remember Dr. Metcalf used to keep some kind of key in one of them drawers. I knew it was important, so I made up a way so I wouldn't forget. But all I remember now is the name Mandy Lee. It must have meant something to me at the time, but now I forget what it was. Mandy Lee. Mandy Lee. Mandy Lee. They all look kind of the same. You can see how I'd forget, can't you? Yeah. Now don't do that. It'll take you all night to root through them drawers. Think, man. Think. Mandy Lee! It must, must mean something! Mandy Lee... Shit, I... That's where they keep all them. Okay, so I need to get something that, that's out of That's where it. they keep... But I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do. Mandy Lee... Mandy Lee... What the fuck does that mean? It's, it's called a Utica cage. They lock you in there, there overnight and set it so you, so you can't unbend your legs. If you treated a do dog like that, they'd throw from you in jail. Right. It's called a... They'd strap you in that thing, lower the box over your head, and just leave you there. 
I cut a hole in the seat so you could crap. The women were lucky they pee straight, straight down. But the men pissed all over themselves because they couldn't get their hands free. Yeah. Howdy. Were, were you an inmate? Yeah. <laughs> you mean what am I in for? I'm just old, old is all. I forget things. My wife, wife died. My kids didn't know what to do with me. So I ended up here. Did they know what it's like in here? Are you nuts? You think they might tell them that? They done done the best they could by me. They just deserve to get on with their lives. Everybody's gotta die somewhere. I told them what them old Nick Brennan was doing fine. Nick Brennan? Mandy Lee? What's Mandy Lee mean? How did you get get by? The first thing is, don't, don't let them see you cry. They'll think you're depressed. Start pouring pills down your throat thro faster than you can say Jack Rob Robinson. Any other tips? Don't turn your back on that kneecap guy. He talks civilized, but he's got a, a mean streak a mile wide. Oh, I know all about that. Did they know what they were doing? Are you kidding? They, they were shooting in the dark and we were the far wall. They, they didn't have a clue why people go haywire. Anybody but got cured around here, it was because they were desperate to get away from the quacks. <laughs> yeah. The quacks. Mandy Lee, what does that mean, though? Like, eh, do I need to look that up in the fucking diction, the uh, fucking computer, I mean? Maybe. Let me just see if, if I can find Mandy Lee on that. Computer. I don't remember what the fuck that's supposed to mean. Let's push the thing to one. Because I know we're supposed to get something out of that drawer. I wish I could figure out what the hell I'm supposed to... How the fuck I'm supposed to get it out. Because they want me to get a key out of there. But I have no idea where to get it. And I bet that opens the uh, padlock so I can get the... Uh, uh, lock it. Shit, I know where the fuck I am. I used to think my work would be known all over the world. Now all that is up to you, or to Joshua. Yeah. You are a piece of shit. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna look up that Mandy Lee. I don't know what the fuck that means. Mandy Lee. Press the key to continue. Nicholas Brennan. Okay. That's her, that's his daughter. 3C. C. 3C. What does that mean? Okay, well, now I know who Mandy Lee is. But again, that doesn't tell me what the hell I'm supposed to do with that information. Maybe he, he can tell me something that I've told him who that is. And then once I tell him who that is, I don't know. Let's find out. Plus there's something about 3C, I'm sure that has some relevance too. Do I need to just look for one that says 3C? And again, I don't know what that means either. And let's push the stupid thing to B. Let us see. I can't remember which 
position, wasn't it? No, damn it, not that one, right not this one. I think this is it, right? Yeah, this is it. This is the room. Alright, let's see if I can put that three seeds. You know what I'm saying? Howdy. Okay, now. 3C. 3C. They all look kind of the... 3C. 3C. That, that's it? Now I remember. How could I forget and get my own daughter's address? Aha! Cool, I got the key. And I think this key will open the... padlock. That I found in the boiler, I mean the burn, the furnace room area, I believe. I I hope I'm right. And I believe that means that I can finally get that necklace. Again, I don't know why I need the necklace. But I have a feeling when I pick it up, I'm gonna encounter another one of those types of puzzle type things. So I need to uh be prepared for that. Sure. Three, six. Let's see if this key works. Key use on... No! Well then what the hell is that for? It's too small to fit on the ring. No wonder he had to hide it. Yeah, well, what is it open? But it's not the padlock. Hmm. I'm a little stumped again. What the hell am I supposed to use that key for? Hmm. I mean, it's a small key, so what the hell do I use it for? Is it for that casket? I was for that casket that they were talking about. But I don't know the hell that is either. Hmm. Let's try out this room again. Maybe there's something else in here that I'm missing. But I don't think so, because I didn't see any locked containers in this room. That's where they keep. Okay. Can I use this key for anything? Apparently not. So, what the hell is that key for? Guess not that. Hmm. What do I use this key for? To look this up because I'm stumped. I forget what the hell I need this key for. Okay, I'll look this up a bit. 
There's a magnet on this? I didn't even see the magnet by the office. Hold on. Wait a minute. Okay, so apparently I missed something in that room. Like a magnifying glass, and there's also a feather in there. I don't know how I could have missed those two things, but apparently I missed them, so let me go back to the second floor here. I found that key though. Not sure what the key's for though. in this other lady's room. So we gotta go back there and get that pen to her. So let's uh, go in here. I believe that she has a feather pen in here, but I can't remember where the hell we're supposed to see that. I didn't see any feather pen. Maybe I'm missing something though. I mean, clearly I'm missing something. Knowing me, I always miss something. Hmm. Go closer, maybe? Maybe there's something over here. Ah! That, that might be a feather pen, right? Giuliano makes all his creations from genuine ostrich. Okay, so I didn't look Giuliano through. makes... Yeah, 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 I don't care. I didn't want to take that, thank you. Hmm, what's this? Oh. My eyes are failing. The glass makes makes it easier to read. Take that. Thank you. Okay, now I think I need to use this on the uh, ah. There's a bird. A couple of birds on it. Right. Can I talk to her now? Or do I still not have enough proof? 
How will I know when I found it? It's a secret. The item has special markings, but I won't tell you what they are. Uh, I think I know what it is, derp. Uh, can I show this to you now, bitch? Kind of annoying me. Uh, just put it over there with the cups. Thank, thank you. Okay, so she knows what it is now. She knows, I believe. So she believes me now. Oh, does she? I don't see. Hmm. Put it with the cups. Okay, so I gotta go back over to the cups then. Alright. So she believes me now that this is her. Um. Damn. Uh. Teapot now. Right? I mean. Just one minute, minute young man. How do I know that pot pot's mine? <sighs> there are two M's on it. Yes? Anyone can see that. Each period is really a small bird. You are correct. I have told no one here about this, so you must have learned it yourself. My maiden name was Meryl Martin. My mother named me for two of her favorite birds. Mm. When I married, she gave me this, this coffee set and said, you may, may change your name, but he, here's a small reminder that you will, will always be my little bird. Do you remember the ECT treatments? Oh, how could anyone forget? They would take, take you down to the basement and open the door with a key that looked as if it could unlock the Bastille. Mm -hmm. Then they shoved a piece of rubber in your mouth and attached some wires to your head. The orderlies would hold you down. Then the shock would come, like a white hot steel bar behind your eyes. Mm -hmm. Ten dentists drilling on exposed nerves couldn't cause this much pain. Okay, so now I can go in there now. Do you know anything about a secret room? I have some information that may help you. But first, I want you to help me. You've proven adept at recovering items that Malcolm has stolen from me. I would like you to recover the item that means more to me than anything else. The, the locket. It is a locket. Yeah, I knew it. Where do you think Malcolm him hid the locket? There is a wall safe in Malcolm's office, behind the picture of his wife. There was a trick to opening it. He would press a certain spot on the frame. It would make a peculiar, hollow sound, hmm. and then the picture would swing open. I believe the locket is in there. It's not, but, uh, because I know where, where your locket is, but, uh, thank you for telling me that, because I can now go and access that thing. And I believe I will do that. Oh, but first I need to get that girl her, uh, uh, pen that she wanted. We gotta do that. I forget why we need to get into Malcolm's safe, though. Because it's not the, um, locket that we need to get in there, but I forget what it is we need to get in there. Let us put, uh, where is the... Where does she... Oh, right here. Ah, thank you. I will put this here. Thank you. With both pen and ink, I can now write to Elizabeth. Only I, I had the handkerchief as well. All right, well, I'll find that. I still gotta find that. But I, I almost helped you. All right. Let us head to. Hmm. I guess we'll go talk to. Uh, well. This the. Uh, or is it the other way? I forget. I think it's this way, because this is the way out. This way takes you to the, uh... Doesn't it? I hope so. Yeah, this is it. You can go back to the elevator now. And let's open up his safe. It'll be fun to prime this asshole's life. Let's steal it from his priceless artifacts. This, this guy deserves it. He's a piece of shit. Malcolm Metcalf is an asshole. Alright. I have no 
sympathy for this bastard now. He has proven to be a really psychopathic asshole. I've seen too much of him. And he... Alright. There's a trick to opening it. I think I can open this now. Right? Tap on frame. It sounds the same all over over. Hmm. It sounds this the same all over. Okay, well then what am I supposed to do? Open it. It sounds the same. It sounds the same. Your mother died too. I had it custom made in Florence. Your mother loved Italian craftsmanship. Okay, how am I supposed to open this? It sounds the same all. Yeah. It sounds the same. It sounds the same. Hmm. The key? Nah. What the hell am I supposed to do? stumped here. I need to find the stethoscope. Okay, I think it's a stethoscope in the ECT chamber. Got it. So, that's why... Oh, I need to use the stethoscope to find out where the, uh... I can tap on it. Alright, I got it. Alright, so I gotta head back to the basement then. So that's when I told you. Oh, how to get into the electroshock therapy room. Right. Okay. So let's go in and find this. And talk to Jack. <laughs> he sounds a lot like Jack Nicholson. I do remember that much. Because, I mean, how could you forget that performance? This guy's going to be fun to talk to. I wonder if I should keep playing or if I should quit for the, for the night. I mean, I've played a long time. I don't know how much more I'll do. But I'm trying to do it all in one sitting, and I don't know, like, if I should save it for the rest, for the rest for next time, or... I mean, I've done one of the motion, I mean, one of the uh, puzzles that requires you to be quick about saving your life, so... 
I may hold off on doing anything else. Well, let's talk to Jack real quick and that'll be all we'll do for him, I think. Let's see what he has to say. Welcome to the, to the big time, time baby. This is, this is where we se separate the men and from the bo boys. Yeah, he definitely sounds like Jack Nicholson. Those things go, go across your chest. Not, not your arms, you see. Because when the volts hit, hit you spasm as so bad. Your, your arms would break. So an orderly stands on each side. And those guys were me bastards too. Ah, oh, they punch you in the gut when, when the doctors weren't looking. That's the frequency machine. They got a guy st stands there who turns the dials so they don't match the numbers behind your head. If they do match, some kind of resonance thing happens. The machine blows a gasket and they gotta go to Boston to fix it. Mm, that's why we got that compact. You can't see him while you're in the chair, but those are the numbers the frequency guy watches. Aha! Uh -huh. Whoa, you should see this baby when it's all lit up. Lights are flashing and sirens are go going. Then they send about a billion volts right through your head. <laughs> After that, you don't remember much for a few days. <laughs> then, you remember too much. God, he's so... That's the master switch. When they throw that, that sucker, you got exactly 90 seconds till the end of the wor world. Okay. Are you nuts? Get out of here! <laughs> Whoa, you should see this baby. That's the EEG machine. The doctors think it's a big deal, but the, the orderlies say it don't mean squat. <laughs> okay. What are we? Oh, that's right, the stethoscope. There's nothing like, like a shiny piece of cold metal on your chest first thing in the morning. Hello! <laughs> Take that. Alright, let's look at this. They here. tell you. They'd go through two or three of those each week. Hell, they got goddamn settings wrong once, and I bit clear through through brand new one myself. Leave it alone. Okay, that was the case. What's that say? The basic stethoscope has changed surprisingly little through the years. It is believed that this one belonged to the superintendent himself. Mm -hmm. Mouth guards were provided for the comfort of the patients. My ass! <laughs> <laughs> My ass. Alright, let's, let's, let's read what this one says. And that'll be the last one. These read for the night, too. Electroconvulsive therapy. Electroconvulsive therapy is its roots in the shock treatments that were developed in the 1930s, invented by Hugo Cerletti and Lucio Vigny, who adapted their first device in a pair of tongs used to stun hogs in a slaughterhouse. The treatment induces a convulsion by passing electric current through the brain. By 1950, over 170,000 people in the United States are being administered ECT on a regular basis. The mechanism of ECT works is not known. The treatment is generally administered twice or three times a week until the patient proves or until it becomes clear for a treatment to be ineffective. Like other treatments for depression, ECT is not a permanent cure. The rate of relapse is really high. Studies suggest as many as a third of the most severely depressed patients relapse within four months and half within a year. The equipment. Most of the machines in this room were designed by Mr. Metcalf and built to his specifications. Snaps and other equipment used to deliver ECT is considered more compact and reliable. It's determined back for electricity. The current put out birds on us an additional operation need to monitor its frequency to ensure damage to the ECT machine itself. As I said, a resonance that would shut parts of the machine down. The chair is made of wood. It is not insulated in any way, as the shock only travels a very short distance through the patient's head, and there is no danger of electrocution to the operator. Indeed, it tends manually to restrain the patient's arms for strapping them down, resulting too many injuries to make a multiple course of therapy. The UG's image spread has changed very little from Dr. Metcalf's day to today. It still measures low delta, theta, and alpha up to the fast beta brainwaves. Procedure. Patient on breakfast on the day they were to receive treatment. Upon arriving in the treatment room, a conducive pace was smeared on his temples and he was to seat in the chair. His chest was strapped down, but on his arms, he was restrained by attendants. There was inflexibility of mechanical restraints for related injuries. The mouth was going to face the patient's mouth to ensure he did not bite through his tongue. 
on power of the headset containing the electrodes would lower on the patient's hand to counter the action shocker began. Duration intensity of shocker estimated on a case by case basis by the upper of the equipment. Okay, side effects. The most pronounced side effect of BCT is memory loss, both short term and long term. Some patients report memory gaps covering time mainly before treatment, while others lose memories from early for their lives. The patient typically recovers consciousness by later treatment, but he is confused or dazed and may experience headaches the remainder of that day. Almost all patients can perform team functions after receiving BCT. All the more complex skills like playing the piano are sometimes impaired. There are historical accounts of BCT being used to do and punish patients, who trivially trouble some individuals receiving several shocks in a single day. However, there's no record of such behavior occurring at Blackstone. Yeah, no records. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. Alright. Alright. I think that's all we're gonna do for today. Is there anything else to look at here? That's to catch the puke. Some guys really spew when the vault hit them. Hmm. That's vinegar. They use it to clean you off before they put on the conductive jelly. It'd, it'd be too bad if a little bit of dirt meant you only got one million volts instead of two. <laughs> That's conductive jelly. Okay. Take it. They don't look like look much, but they're great to hang on to when the orderlies are trying to get you in the chair. <laughs> this is so funny. It's the most fiendish torture device ever conceived by the mind of man. I've done the Hydra, solitary, fever therapy, the works. I'd rather do them all at the same time. And sit in that chair for ten seconds. All right, let's talk to him some more. Well, look what the cat dragged in. <laughs> what did you do? That's the outside. Forget the outside. The game's in here, and if you lose, you lose it all. It seems too serious for that. If you don't treat it like a game, you'll go crazy. It's all you against the system. Don't give up. Never say die. Don't you dare let the bastards win. The truth is, they're not that smart. So it's not too hard to outthink them. Except Metcalf. He's the smart one. Mm -hmm. Isn't the game name rigged? They think they're holding all the cards. And they are. But that doesn't mean you can't flip over the table. <laughs> mm. It sounds like you're proud of yourself. You're damn right I'm proud. I took every punch those turds could throw and came right back for more. They never licked Jack Kramer. Jack Kramer. Anyway. Jack Kramer. <laughs> Did they all fight back? Nah, most of them didn't have it in them. I remember one morning they found a woman in the ward, hang hanging with her head wedged between the transom and the door frame. They never figured out how she got there. Mm -hmm. I did it. It was an act of mercy. <laughs> I wish someone had the guts to do the same for me. Her last words before I pulled away the chair, you know what they were? God bless us. Did you ever get out? You sit in that chair, with the electrodes clamped to your skin. And between the shocks, there's this strange odor. And then you realize that the last smell that's in your nostrils as you die is the stink of your own flesh burning. No, I didn't win. Nobody won. Mm hmm. Alright, we're done talking to this guy. I think we're done. And I think that's all we're gonna do for today, because I've been playing for an awful long time. I forget how long I've actually been playing. But I'm really curious real quick. I want to see what the hell is in that that damn safe. Let's 
because I have access to that safe now using that stethoscope. That explains why that stethoscope is needed because it's belonged to him. It probably had like a specific, you know. The family is a. Probably, it probably had like a, a defense mechanism in the, the stethoscope, you know, that will only work on that painting or something. And that's why it belonged to him, you know. No one else could use it because he was very secretive about his, you know, secrets. Let's see what the hell is behind that safe. I really want to know. Let's see what's in there. Because now I can push it open. Key, don't I? No, I need a combination. Ah, damn it. What's the combination? Twenty-four fifty-two. Okay. On to. On to. Three, four. Uh, four. Uh. Twenty-four fifty-two. Twenty. One, twenty-two, twenty-two, twenty-four. Okay. I think that's right. I'll go to that, right? 52. Okay, that's 50. Uh, do two. Ta da! Did it. Alright, what's in here? I found a hole in the wall, Dad. So that's Maybe what I can that. make it bigger. You're a good boy, Josh. So I'm that was what you. my character's birthday was for, to open this. Alright. Take the casket. Alright, what's this? It, it's a Fabergé egg. It looks delicate, but if you don't know, know the trick to opening it, it would take quite a bit of pressure to get it to crack. Hmm, let's take that. It is a Fabergé egg. Can I break it with this? Will let me do that? Break the egg. Yeah, cool. What's that say? The word you seek is the thing itself. Okay. What the hell that means? Curious. Whatever the hell that means. I think we got this key to open this. Open the casket. Ah, there's the handkerchief. But I know that once we do that, we are going to trigger another thing. And we're going to do that next time because it's a really tricky one, too. Uh,
Okay, so I don't need to worry about this for a while then. Alright, so I can go ahead and do this, and but I, I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna do this uh, in the next video, because this game has gone on long enough. I've been playing this game for a long time, and uh, but anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this live stream of John Souls of Blackstone Chronicles, and I will be completing the next, uh, the rest of the game probably next Sunday. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and bye bye. Save again to make sure I start saved. All right, uh, yes. Oh, by the way, stay tuned for more live streams on my Twitch channel at Angelus05, and I will be posting these live streams to my YouTube channel. My alias on there is Child of the 80s 1981. So if you miss anything here, you can catch it there. All right, bye bye. Shut this down because this is a fake Windows 95. Shut down. Okay. And I gotta hit Control Alt. Switch down to quick time. Press that. And then press this. And then stop this, right? Oh, yeah, I gotta go to settings. Then where is that? Oh, wait, not. So you have 90, right?